Ghost Hunters was an unscripted paranormal investigation series on sci-fi that saw its cast, well, hunt ghosts. But how did this whole thing get started? Has the team actually discovered evidence of the paranormal, or has it all been one big con? Jason Hawes, former co-lead investigator for Ghost Hunters, founded a paranormal support group called Rhode Island Paranormal Society in 1990. In his book, Ghost Hunting, True Stories of Unexplained Phenomena from the Atlantic Paranormal Society, Hawes writes about rips, saying, It wasn't a ghost hunting organization, at least not at first. It was more of a support group. I was trying to connect with people who had gone through experiences similar to mine. Those experiences included seeing things. He said, Usually it started with a mist, out of which emanated a dim light, and then out of the light came other things, including see-through animals and full-body human apparitions. They terrified him, but the support group and, bizarrely, eating green olives helped him feel less crazy. During the early days of RIPS, Hawes received a call from someone offering to improve their website for free. That person turned out to be Grant Wilson. After a period of working together, Hawes and Wilson wanted to develop a more rational approach to investigating paranormal activity, something that relied less on emotions and more on science and logic. The duo formed the Atlantic Paranormal Society, TAPS, which was the start of what would eventually grow into the ghost hunters made famous on television. In addition to the standard electromagnetic field meters and electric voice phenomenon recorders, EMF and EVP devices respectively, ghost hunters investigators use a wide variety of unconventional items to detect paranormal activity. Among the more unusual items are helium balloons, which Grant Wilson says are used in cases where property owners experience cold spots thought to be made by nearby ghosts. Half-deflated balloons can be put into play to show that, no, there's just an actual draft in the home. You don't even gotta take it out of here, just make it roll back and forth. A few other items in their toolbox that you wouldn't expect to see include crepe paper, which is sometimes used as a cheap motion detector, and talcum powder, which Wilson says ghost hunters sometimes sprinkle on the ground to pick up footprints left behind by creeping apparitions. Steve Gonzalez, former lead investigator and case manager for Ghost Hunters, recommended some of his favorite tools of the trade and a gear guide for road trippers, and put a good old-fashioned flashlight at the top of the list. Just goes to show that it doesn't take a lot of money to hunt ghosts. For what we do, I get excited. Yeah, like, when you see new, a new flashlight, I'm like, ooh, we check that one out. Stick. There's plenty of evidence Ghost Hunters is fake and always has been. While filming at the Overbrook Asylum for the 2009 episode Garden State Asylum, a member of the crew left behind what appeared to be staging notes. Further first-hand evidence is found in a Reddit thread of people involved in various reality shows. In it, a user going by the name Boss K. Hogg says, I was on set for a filming of Ghost Hunters in Buffalo. On the show, they are investigating an upper level of the Buffalo Central Terminal when they hear a disembodied voice say, Get out. It was the property manager on a lower level yelling at some homeless people to clear out. Everyone knew it was him, but it somehow made it in the show as an unexplained event. It's Reddit, so take that proof with a grain of salt, but it definitely seems plausible. Even the equipment used on the show has been called into question. An in-depth article by The Atlantic details how EMF meters, specifically the K2 meters frequently used on ghost hunters, are, quote, erratic, prone to false positives, and easily manipulated. EMF meters supposedly detect electromagnetic fields. The readings spike when in proximity of something as simple as wiring in the walls of a building, which isn't accurate, but great if you want evidence of ghosts for your TV show. If the ghost sleuthing business suddenly dried up, many of the investigators on Ghost Hunters, both past and present, have side jobs they could rely on to keep food on their tables. The New York Times reports both Jason Hawes and Grant Wilson are former rotor rooter plumbers, so they're the ones to call if your pipes are full of tormented souls. Kristen Lumen, the new co-lead investigator for A&E's Ghost Hunters reboot, is a licensed hypnotherapist. Former tech manager Steve Gonzalez is a film producer, even working alongside Guillermo del Toro to create the horror short The Captured Bird. And Daryl Marston, another new co-lead investigator on the reboot, is a former firearms instructor and a contractor. Looking at that list, compiling a team that knows how to properly fire a gun, fix a leaky pipe, patch up the wall when it's fixed, film the whole process, and then hypnotize you into thinking the whole mess never happened sounds like a pretty well-rounded crew. Donna LaCroix, a case manager and investigator for Ghost Hunters and Ghost Hunters International, has been very vocal in expressing her distaste towards the show, as well as her former cast members. Calling into a radio program called Ghost Divas in 2009, LaCroix said that her contract while on the show was so bad that she nearly went bankrupt. Plus, everyone was out to stab each other in the back, and there was a staging crew for episodes. 
As for her opinions about Ghost Hunter leads Grant Wilson and Jason Hawes, she referred to them as, quote, the kings during her call, going so far as to say they treated tech manager and investigator Brian Harnois like their, quote, whipping boy to the point of mental abuse. In 2012, Harnois scared his fans, friends, and family when he went missing after posting a note on his Facebook that appeared to threaten self-harm, which has since been deleted. In 2012, Grant Wilson, co-lead investigator for Ghost Hunters, announced during an episode that he'd be leaving the show at the end of his eighth year to focus on other aspects of his personal life. Jay and I have been talking, and it's been a very difficult decision to make, but uh, I'm going to be leaving Ghost Hunters. In a recent interview with Den of Geek, Wilson says that at the time, he felt as though the show had started to rely on gimmicks and that they were, quote, kicking a dead horse, which ultimately led to his decision to leave the show. I was tired, and uh, I was ready to get back to my family. But in 2019, A&E picked up Ghost Hunters for a reboot, with Wilson returning to head up a whole new team of investigators. This thrilled fans while also causing a bit of confusion. What prompted Wilson to change his tune? In an interview with TV Insider, Grant said, I never stopped investigating the paranormal. My youngest is about to graduate from high school and he's got it all figured out, so why not get back into it? Still doing it, still gonna do it, we'll always do it. And uh, just because, uh, you know, you wanna take a break doesn't mean people don't need help. Makes sense, but why didn't his previous partner in Ghost, Jason Hawes, come back as well? Looking at the chain of events for Ghost Hunters, specifically those having to do with key members leaving the show, there are a few mysteries to puzzle over. Why is it that Grant Wilson was the first to announce he was leaving, then returned for the A&E reboot in 2019, but co-lead investigator Jason Hawes rode the sinking ship to the very end of its run on sci-fi and stayed gone? You'd think that when A&E picked the show back up for new seasons and Wilson announced he'd be returning, Hawes would have jumped on board as well, but that wasn't the case. Instead, Hawes heads an entirely different show with a very similar name, Ghost Nation, which debuted on the Travel Channel in October 2019. Although Wilson and Hawes have both stuck with their stories that, when it came to their working relationship, everything was rosy, it's hard not to wonder if that's as true as they make it seem. Shortly after Grant announced he was leaving Ghost Hunters in 2012, he and Hawes listed Spalding Inn, a New Hampshire property they co-owned, for sale. Hawes spoke about Grant's initial split during an episode of Beyond Reality Radio, which he co-hosts, saying, Anytime a cast member leaves, there is a change in the dynamics of the team. Sometimes good, sometimes not good. If there was ever a feud here, Hawes and Wilson are playing it cool. On June 7, 2016, Jason Hawes posted a message to Facebook that read, With heavy heart, we want to inform everyone that we are choosing at this time to end our relationship with Sci-Fi Channel. Further insight, however, points more towards a cancellation than a voluntary departure. During a speaking engagement in Vermont in 2015, Chris Williams, a former case manager and investigator for Ghost Hunters and its spin-off series Ghost Hunters International, said that a dip in ratings and the subsequent envelope-pushing stunts in a desperate effort to bring them up again led to Ghost Hunters International getting canceled. In an episode of Ghost Hunters International titled Sacrificed Mayan Spirits, Belize, cast member Susan Slaughter cut herself during a bloodletting ritual, and Williams thought that the stunt was too much. After expressing her reservations and then pleading for the episode not to air, Williams quit when her requests were ignored. Knowing this, it would make sense that Ghost Hunters, which experienced a rating dip of its own, was next on the chopping block. In 2015, the year before Hawes' announcement, the show was averaging ratings of just 1.7 million viewers, a significant drop from the 3 million it brought in during earlier seasons. And sci-fi was going in a different direction towards mostly scripted television. Within a few years, only one paranormal show, Paranormal Witness, remained. The women of Ghost Hunters have proven themselves more than capable of holding their own. One woman in particular, Amy Bruni, an investigator for the show from 2008 to 2014, sleuthed spooks while pregnant. In a 2013 interview with Glamour, Bruni said, If we're local, I'll investigate until I go into labor. As long as I'm close to the hospital, it's fine. A proclivity for the paranormal has fallen within the wheelhouse of women for many years now, believe it or not. When the director Paul Feig made the announcement in 2014 that he'd be making a new Ghostbusters film with an all-female cast, the negative reaction was immediate. Bruni, as one would guess, had a lot to say on the topic, and admitted in a 2015 Huffington Post article that at first she thought the angle was, quote, a stunt, but gave it more thought and concluded it was actually a perfect way to add to the arc of the films without attempting to replace the original cast. She also chimed in with some pearls as to why women have every right to be ghost hunters, or fans of the paranormal in general. I would say the paranormal field strongly skews female. 
When you attend a paranormal convention, you usually got 75% ladies to 25% men. However, on television, the field is strongly represented by men, and frankly, it's just not accurate. Throughout the years, Jason Hawes has spoken about the infamous Amityville haunting in such a way that leads one to believe he doesn't believe it at all. In an interview with the blog Geek Mom in 2015, Hawes was asked what location he would investigate if he had unlimited access, and he said, To answer this, I would need a time machine. I would want to see what truly happened at the Amityville house. I know the claims and have studied the case for many years. I just believe there was way too much hype and not enough truth to it. Furthering evidence of his doubts on the matter, Hall shared a video of the home's patriarch George Lutz discussing the Amityville events to his Facebook page in 2018 with the caption, In this video, George Lutz talks about his and his family's experiences at the Amityville house. Take a listen and tell me your thoughts, real or hype. Seems like Hawes has long since answered that question for himself. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.